Now it's time to say goodbye to SIM 900A, SIM 800L and all the other GSM GPRS modules because the king of all GSM modules, the SIM 7600G LTE module has arrived in the market. It's not only compatible with 4G networks but also backward compatible with 3G and 2G networks. I've used the SIM 900A and SIM 800L GSM modules in many projects and there is no doubt these modules were quite popular. However, as you know, these modules only work with 2G networks and support only 2G SIMs. As you may be aware in most countries, 2G networks are being decommissioned and even in countries where 2G services are currently functional, they will soon be phased out given that we are now in the era of 4G and 5G networks. So guys, it's time to stop using 2G network supported GSM modules and switch to SIM 7600G LTE module. Today you won't find a better GSM module than this. Voltage is no longer an issue as you can use a power supply ranging from 5 to 10 volt with a SIM 7600G. However, according to the manufacturer, the recommended voltage is 5 volts. Another amazing thing is whether you supply it with 5 volt or 10 volt, the TXT and RXD pins will remain at the 3.3 volt TTL level, which makes this model completely compatible with 3.3 volt controller boards like the ESP32, ESP8266, STM32, Raspberry Pi, Pico, etc. Today I'm going to use it with the ESP32 Wi-Fi plus Bluetooth module because in the upcoming video I'm planning to build an IoT based project. Anyway, the default bar rate is 1152 BPS. On the big side you will find a micro SIM card socket, LTE antenna, 3G antenna, GPS antenna, net light indicator LED which is green, power indicator LED which is red, USB 2.0 interface and this is the power conversion chip. The operation temperature is from minus 40 degrees Celsius to plus 85 degrees Celsius. This module includes 7 distinct pins G, R, T, K, V, G and S. First up we have G which stands for ground and it should be connected to the controller ground pin. Next is R the receive pin. This pin is used for serial communication specifically for receiving data. Next is T the transmit pin. This is used to send data from module to the controller board. Together, R and T facilitate two-way serial communication. K pin is the power key and it is used to power on or off the module. By default, it's shorted with the ground via R104. Next is V, the voltage pin. This is where you will need to connect a 5V to 10V power supply and as I said earlier, the recommended voltage is 5V. Here is another G pin and like the first one, it's also a ground pin. Having multiple ground pins can be helpful. Lastly, we have S which stands for sleep. It controls module into sleep mode. This is larger in size than the SIM 800L GSM GPRS model because the SIM 800L does not have a voltage regulator, GPS or support for the latest networks. And it is smaller than the SIM 900A module but still it neither has GPS nor supports 3G and 4G networks. So the SIM 7600G is better in every aspect. It is also not expensive, you can purchase the SIM 7600G module without GPS which will reduce its price even further. I have purchased it from AliExpress but you can also find it on Amazon. I have added links in the description. Let's connect the full band LTE antenna. This is the flexible PCB antenna FCP. Instead of using this, you can also use web antenna. But personally, I like this flexible PCB antenna. For now, we don't need to connect this GPS antenna, but very soon I will use it for the real-time GPS tracking. For the demonstration purposes, I have connected the MLX9614 non-contact infrared temperature sensor and a 4-channel 5-fold solid-state relays module that I am going to use to control these 110 or 220 volt AC bulbs. Instead of using solid-state relays, you can also use these SPD type relays module. This is a 5V and 3 amps power supply which I am going to use to power up the ESP32 Wi-Fi plus Bluetooth module, SIM 7600G module and the solid state relay module. If you want to make your own 5V and 3 amps power supply then you can watch my video. I will add a link in the description. I have powered up the project. Remember safety first. When the 110 or 220 volt AC supply is connected, never touch the relay contacts as it can be extremely dangerous. It is important to note that when working with mains voltage, proper safety precautions should always be taken and it is advisable to consult relevant electrical codes and standards. We use these commands to turn on the relays, use these commands to turn off the relays and use this command to request the temperature. So let's go ahead and do it.
You can see when I turn on or turn off a relay, I also get a feedback message. I can also request the temperature reading at any time. Now let's go ahead and take a look at the wiring. Connect the VCC and ground of the MLX9614 non-contact infrared temperature sensor to the ESP32 3.3 volt and ground. Connect the SCL and SDA pins to the GPIOs 22 and 21. Connect the VCC and ground pins of the solid state relay module to the 5 volt and 3 amps power supply 5 volt and ground. Connect all the 4 solid state relays to the GPIOs 12, 13, 14 and 27. Connect the G and V pins which are the power supply pins to the 5 volt and 3 amps power supply ground and 5 volt. You can see this module has two ground pins. These are internally connected so you can use any of these two ground pins. Connect the R and T pins to the GPIOs 2 and 4. R is the receive and T is the transmit pin. Connect the 5 volt and ground from the 5 volt and 3 amps power supply to the ESP32 5 volt and ground pins. You can follow this circuit diagram. In the circuit diagram, you can see the 5 volt and ground wires. These go to the 5 volt and 3 amps power supply. Here is a circuit diagram of the 5 volt and 3 amps power supply. You might find this wiring quite congested and confusing, but there's no need to worry. I have already designed a PCB in Ultium Designer, where I have added a 5 volt and 3 amps power supply, headers for the SIM 7600G module, and a relay. After designing the PCB and generating the Gerber files, I used the Next PCB Free Online PCB Gerber Viewer and DFM tool HQDFM. I simply dragged and dropped the Gerber files. It quickly analyzed all the files. Next, I opened the desired layers. For this, you can also use the Open All button. Anyway, I closely checked the top and bottom sides. On the right side, I could also see the DFM checklist, which detected DFM problems. I fixed all the related issues and since Next PCB offers PCBs at quite reasonable prices, I ordered 5 PCBs along with a stencil. Only $62 for the 5 PCBs, a stencil and also includes shipping. This is simply amazing. I will add links in the description if you want to try their Gerber Viewer and order high quality PCBs. Now let's go ahead and take a look at the programming. If you have seen my projects related to GSM and MLX9614 non-contact infrared temperature sensor, then I don't think you will have any difficulty in understanding this code. Anyway, first you will need to install these two libraries. For this, simply copy the library name, then go to the sketch menu, include library, and then click on the manage libraries. Paste the library name in the search box. As you can see, I have already installed this library. Now, follow the same exact steps for the DF Robot MLX9614 library. As you can see, I have also installed this library. And one more thing, if you are using the ESP32 Wi-Fi Plus Bluetooth module for the first time, then you will also need to install the ESP32 board in the Arduino IDE. For this, you can watch my getting started video on the ESP32 Wi-Fi Plus Bluetooth module. The rest of the code is pretty straightforward. We simply turn on and turn off the relays and request the temperature value. For the line-by-line -line code explanation, you can read my article available on electronicclinic.com. Finally, upload the program and start controlling your devices and monitor your sensors. So, that's all for now. Support me on Patreon for more videos. I hope you liked today's episode. Like and share this video with your friends. See you in next episode and thanks for watching.